So let's begin maybe with, uh, have anyone heard about Next.js or even work with? All right, um, so let's begin uh, with what exactly is Next.js. Official site describes it as a progressive Node.js framework for building efficient, reliable and scalable server-side -side application. But it does not tell us, us anything about itself since we can describe any other backend framework with these words. Uh, so let's get to the bottom of how it's made and what it actually uses. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I forgot about it. Um, so it's built on Node.js. Um, so we've got covered portability across popular operating system, containers, or even have a great support across the, the internet. Uh, it's built purely on TypeScript. So we have proper and reliable typings. Uh, it's HTTP platform agnostic, um, so we can configure like popular HTTP platforms like Express or Fastifies, or even create our own adapter if something all new will come and would be better, I guess. Uh, it's heavily dependent on decorators, which makes our code more readable because uh, it's a more declarative way, like defining what is on get on get method on, or it's uh, I don't know like a communication between Rabbit and uh, and the application, and uh, have uh, tons of supported packages for creating databases or um, implement some security uh, concerns, and it's actually built on Angular schematics, so. It does the same uh, CLI commands as in Angular and we can create uh, templates just like in Angular so we can uh, fastly create our common files. Uh, so uh, let's get to the interesting part where Nest.js is inspired by Angular. On the official GitHub page, there is uh, information about uh, how it's built. So the architecture is heavily inspired by Angular. So we'll take a look at how heavily is heavily. Um, our first stop, will be declaring a module as we normally do in Angular. As we can see on attached code, it's almost look like Angular module. What is changed is actually the name of the creator from ng model to module. And um, yeah, and um, the main difference is actually the declarations and the controllers because uh, in Nestor's we don't have a component so rather than we have controllers which are quite similar um, because we could say they are some way communicating with the user or you know passing the data between them and the next the next thing uh, would be actually in exports um, because the come up the controllers can be used in other controllers like in angular so we can export only providers and I think that would be all from this. Uh, next up would be controllers, which I mentioned before. Uh, controllers are like components in Angular because we could say they somehow display the data. They react on input like HTTP request, TCP message, or any other messaging system between two places. On attached code, it shows us how simple and clean is defining HTTP guest request to download movies. Nest took the direction to heavily use the creators to create things. This way, you have a good looking code that is self describing and easy to configure or extend with additional magic like Swagger or use GAS to check whether we can access desired out. Injectables have not really changed compared to Angular. Um, the main difference is that uh, we've got uh, scope rather than provided in uh, property. Um, however, they're not. Uh, really different between them um, because uh, in Nest, every provider or service, I would say, is shared across the application and uh, we can change it by uh, creating a special scope like for request. Then for every request we've got, there will be a, a new instance of the service. And there's also a transient uh, option, which is out of scope of this presentation. So it's more dedicated to so uh, create a service per consumer or client that is requesting our resources. And then we've got pipes, which um, they're not um, existing less as like decorators in Angular um, because we have no template. Uh, however, it's still got the implemented interface 
uh, that looks alike like in Angular. Um, so we can use this approach in, uh, for example, in HTTP request, like when we want to map some uh, types or check the validation. Um, so it's quite handy uh, when, we, when we want to, uh, before processing a request, to check whether everything is okay. So um, next part would be Express versus Fastify. Uh, so these are the HTTP platform that I mentioned before, and we'll see actually what could be better for us uh, for in the matter of uh, POC. Um, because as I mentioned before, NestJS actually is providing us uh, adapters, uh, so we can plug any other uh, platform to, to use if we create our own adapters. However, by default, NestJS is providing us uh, Express uh, provider, uh, Express adapter, sorry, that is configured by default and it's used. But we can also use uh, Fastify as well. Um, but it's actually requires additional code. Um, but most of them is covered by official documentation on NestJS. So it's a fast way, I, should, I would say, to implement this thing. Mm, so let's try to compare them and uh, maybe we can choose what is actually better for us. So Express is with us for a long time uh, and because of that it's popular and it will be easier to find help or actually find the package to, I don't know, integrate some functionality or increase security. Um, it's actually when I looked for the packages that actually uh, are, you know, like plugins for Express, I found nearly 200 of them. And they're most about filtering, caching, uh, or even uh, plug into some additional technologies uh, from uh, outside of the Node.js framework. Mm, on the other hand, we've got a Fastify, uh, which is quite new in Node.js world. And it's built on the, the most icing way we can imagine, uh, just not to waste any millisecond. Uh, so uh, it's a new library and most of them creators are trying to keep up with experts. So we've got, um, I would say, mirrored libraries like we had in experts, like Helmet for uh, removing, for example, headers from uh, from requests or create a passport, which actually authorizes our routes. So they're trying their best to uh, overrun the <laughs> express, I would say. Oh, sorry. And yeah, um, yeah, I think that is all from this. <laughs> sorry. So which is actually better for POC? Um, so in terms of POC, Express will be a better choice for a few reasons. Firstly, it's configured by default, so there's no additional boilerplate code to add. Secondly, it's widely used by Node.js community. So as I mentioned before, it's easier to find help or you know, ask a question or find the libraries. And lastly, uh, to be honest, it's not always the speed of the um, of the server since uh, it's only POC, uh, but it actually can depend. There might be cases when we would like to, you know, great performance. So then we'll have to choose a Fastify. As a bonus, uh, as I mentioned before, NestJS offers official packages. There are a lot of them right now, uh, as I counted, nearly 15. Uh, so they are mostly like database divers for MySQL, NeoSQL, or GraphQL. Uh, Swagger package for easy integrating with OpenIP specification and create a visible specification of available endpoints and how to use them. Um, there are security packages like for course or um, using the popular helmet, which uh, boosts our security over requests, handling cookies, and tons of them really. And lastly, we have uh, microservices that can be integrating with Redis, MQTT, Kafka, and actually the list is pretty huge as well. Uh, so yeah. And I think that that would be all. Um, that was quite fast. Uh, any questions?
All right. So thank you for attendance and have a good day.